Ehlen, have you ever been reading the Bible and paused to think, that's odd, why is this written the way it is? Well, this happens to me often, so I've decided to create a new video series called Interesting Things in the Bible, where I will share with you the unique things that I come across in Scripture. The Scriptures are full of mysteries that are fun to uncover, and I hope that you'll enjoy this just as much as I do. Genesis chapter 1 tells us how God created the universe and set everything into order. This chapter of the Bible is known as the creation story, and it's widely believed to be the story of the seven days where God completed his works and then rested. But if we take a closer look, we find something very interesting about the story of these seven days. In day number one, God created light and separated it from darkness. Then there was evening, then morning, day one. Day two, God created the two waters, one above and the other below, and set it as the firmament. We refer to this as the sky. Then there was evening, then morning, day two. Day three, God creates the earth, seas, and plants. Then there was evening, then morning. Notice a pattern so far? Day four, God creates the stars that give us day and nighttime and help us keep track of the months, seasons, and years. Then there was evening, then morning, day four. Genesis 1, verses 5, 8, 13, 19, 23, and 31 all refer to the days of creation using the specific words, there was evening, then morning. In our language, we typically use chronological order when telling a story. This means that the creation story would have to be worded as, there was morning, then evening. But that's not the case here, which makes us ask the question, why? Why does the creation story always say, there was evening, then morning? There is one central character in the entire story of the Bible. That character is Jesus. More specifically, the story of Jesus tells us how all of mankind is freely redeemed through his sacrifice and work. In this case, the story of creation and redemption are parallel to one another. The story of creation points us to the story of redemption in Jesus. In the creation story of Genesis chapter 1, it seems to suggest that God begins his work in the evening time and completes it in the morning. So how does this creation story parallel the story of redemption in Jesus? Before we talk about the story of Jesus, let's talk about the story of the Hebrew people and how God redeemed them out of their slavery in Egypt. We begin our story in Exodus chapter 12. Here, the Passover is set by God through Moses, who instructs the Hebrew people by saying this. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. So the Passover, which marks the beginning of Israel's redemption, starts in the evening time. During the night time, the destroyer came and killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. This caused Pharaoh to call for Moses and his brother Aaron and tell them that they and the rest of the Israelites are free to go. But that's not where the story ends. 
Exodus 13, 20 through 22. They took their journey from Succoth to Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. Shortly after the Hebrew people are told they can leave Egypt, they journey from Ramses to Etham. This took a few days to complete. Finally, in Exodus 14, we come to the crossing of the Red Sea. And the angel of the Lord, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. As the army of Pharaoh begins to close in on the Hebrew people, the angel of the Lord moves in a pillar of cloud from the front of the Hebrew people to behind them. This set up a division between Pharaoh's army and the Israelites. Moses is then directed by God to stretch out his hand. And when he does this, God uses a very strong east wind to separate the waters in the Red Sea. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all night. All night. So the Hebrew people begin to cross the Red Sea during the nighttime, and the Egyptians begin to chase them. But how does the story end? And more importantly, when does the story end? Exodus 14, 23 through 30. The Egyptians chased Israel into the sea with their chariots and horsemen. Then, in the morning watch, the Lord troubles the army of Egypt. He took off their chariot wheels so that they were stuck and decided to flee from the Israelites. Then God instructed Moses to stretch out his hand once more, and the separated waters rejoined right where the Egyptians were causing them to drown. At this time, the morning appeared. The sea returned to its fullest depth. The Egyptians were defeated, and the Israelites continued to walk amongst dry ground, completing their redemption out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery. What God began to do in the evening time, he completed it, in the morning. So then, how does this parallel the story of Jesus? Jesus was sent among us to be the redemption for all mankind. In Matthew chapter 26, we find Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is after he and his disciples finish their supper. Jesus instructs Peter, James, and John to keep watch while he prays but he comes back to find them sleeping. This is important for two reasons. One, it's the beginning of the crucifixion story, which is how Jesus would redeem all of mankind. And two, it gives us context as to when the story of redemption began. You guessed it, in the evening. So, we fast forward through the arrest, trial, conviction, crucifixion, and eventual burial of Jesus. And a few days later, we come to him being raised up from the dead. Matthew chapter 28. The two Marys come to the tomb where Jesus was buried. As they approach, an angel descends from heaven and rolls the stone away from the opening of the tomb. The guards of that tomb faint from fear, but the angel says to the two women, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. He is not here. He is risen. When did this happen? Mark chapter 16 verse 2 says this, Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they, the two Marys, came to the tomb when it was dawn. It happened in the morning. The story of creation in Genesis chapter 1 tells us that God begins his work in the evening and completes it in the morning time. But this isn't by mistake. It's by design. This is done to point us to the fact that in the same way God creates, he also 
redeems. God began his work of redeeming the Israelites out of slavery in the evening time when he set the Passover in place. And he completed his work in the morning when the Egyptians were defeated in the Red Sea and the Israelites finished crossing over into freedom. Jesus, the Son of God, began his work of redeeming us from our slavery to sin in the evening time at the Garden of Gethsemane. And he completed his work of redeeming us and setting us free from the slavery of sin in the morning time when he was raised from the dead by God the Father. Colossians 2 verse 17. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. I have many more of these types of writings that I'd love to share with you all. Please like, subscribe, and do share this video. Keep reading scripture and keep looking for clues. I'll see you next time. Salam.